everyone, welcome to the short theory video on the effect of temperature on reaction rates of a reversible reaction. By way of review, changes in temperature affect reaction rates in two ways. It changes the collision rate between molecules and the likelihood of a chemical reaction taking place when molecules do collide. For example, at a higher temperature, by giving molecules more kinetic energy, the rate of collision between them is increased which in turn increases the reaction rates. It's important to remember that this effect on collision rates affects rates of forward and reverse reactions equally. In other words, it affects the endothermic and the exothermic reactions equally. An increase in kinetic energy also means more molecules have sufficient energies to react upon collision. That is, they have more energy than the activation energy of the reaction. While this affects both forward and reverse reaction rates again, it actually affects the endothermic reaction rate more. In this case, a higher temperature will increase the endothermic reaction rate more than the exothermic reaction rate. The reason for this difference is due to the differences in activation energy between the endothermic and exothermic reactions. Activation energy determines the rate of reaction, Lower activation energy means a faster reaction, while a higher activation energy means a slower reaction. On the energy profile diagram, it's quite clear that the endothermic reaction has a much larger activation energy than the exothermic reaction. This is the reason why changes in temperature affects the rate of the endothermic reaction more. This concept can be better understood using a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution graph. The graph shows the variation in kinetic energy of molecules in the system. On the left graph, the activation energies of exothermic and endothermic reactions are labelled as Ea. Only molecules with kinetic energy that's greater than the activation energy can result in a chemical reaction upon collision. For the endothermic reaction, only molecules that have more energy then this particular numerical value can result in a chemical reaction. For the exothermic reaction, anything that has more energy more than its activation energy can react. And this is the area I've shaded underneath the graph. Since the activation energy of the exothermic reaction is lower than the endothermic reaction, you can see that a greater proportion of molecules will be able to react in the exothermic reaction compared to the endothermic reaction. When the temperature of the system is increased, the Boltzmann distribution curve shifts towards the right, such that the average kinetic energy of molecules is increased, while the activation energies of the exothermic and endothermic reactions both remain unchanged. Hopefully what you can notice right now is that by shifting the curve to the right side, the area under the curve that is to the right of the activation energies have become larger for both the exothermic and endothermic reaction. This is why the rates of reaction have become faster. However, if you compare the proportion by which the area have increased, the endothermic reaction experiences a greater effect by this increase in temperature as its activation energy is smaller to begin with. What was originally a smaller proportion of the graph had become much larger, this increase is more evident and more apparent for the endothermic reaction compared to the change that we see for the exothermic reaction. This is why any changes in temperature affects the endothermic reaction more than the exothermic reaction. Conversely, a decrease in temperature also affects the endothermic reaction more. However, as we saw earlier, a decrease in temperature will have the opposite effect to an increase in temperature. That is, it will decrease the rate of both exothermic and endothermic reaction by reducing the proportion of molecules that have sufficient energy to react. That is, the area under the curve that is to the right of the activation energies have become both smaller. As we discussed earlier, this affects the endothermic reaction more, which means the rate of the endothermic reaction decreases more than the exothermic reaction. If the reaction was originally at equilibrium, the two rates would have been equal. So if the endothermic reaction decreases more than the exothermic reaction, 
the exothermic reaction rate will become faster than the endothermic reaction. This is why we typically say that a lower temperature favors the exothermic reaction. This concludes the video on the effect of temperature on reaction rates.